In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Christ is in our midst. Back in the days when fathers waited outside for a baby to be born, there were three men waiting for their joyous news. The first was informed by the nurse that his wife had twins. He told the nurse, isn't that ironic? I pitched for the Minnesota twins. A few minutes later, a second man learned that his wife had triplets. The coincidence was that he worked for 3M Corporation. The third man panicked, and he ran for the door, and he was stopped and asked what happened. And he said, I am getting out of here. And the nurse said, why? And he said, because I work for 7-Eleven. Many of you have children, maybe not 11, but maybe some of you might have 11 godchildren. And today, when we gather on this Godparent Sunday, we recall all those children that we are called to make a difference in their lives. God's children are very special because there is a relationship that the church acknowledges as being like family. It's a way that different families can bond together in a spiritual relationship where a person can be a spiritual mentor for a child. If you think about how many of you are godparents, and if you think about your godchildren, or even your godparents, because each one of us who is an Orthodox Christian has a godparent. And you might think, well, I remember my godparents because they sent me clothes on Easter and Christmas and my birthday. And that might be the only recollection you have of your godparents. But really, if you are here in this church, and if you are praying, and if you feel a connection with God, then your godparent has done something more than just showered you with gifts at, at different seasons. If you think about the Gospel reading today, it's a beautiful reading that speaks about the talents. And the talents that were given by God, it's a symbolic story that speaks about God giving money to other people and for them what they're going to do with it. And you'll recall that person who was given one talent, he just buried it in the ground. And then he came back later and pulled it out and said, I know that you're going to ask for something that you didn't work for, talking to God. And I know that you um, reap where you did not sow and gather where you did not winnow. And we think about that and we might say, well, that's unfair to say that. It's unfair for, the, for God to require something for us to invest it. But as you think of this story, you must think about the fact that it's one more talent than you had on your own. It's five more talents, or however many God has given in the story or has given to you, it's more than you have on your own. So our job is to invest that. And on this Godparent Sunday, we are called to make an investment in other children, in other adults even, to share our relationship with God, to become mentors, to become tutors, and to support and nurture those God children that are around us. We have two baptisms today, and at the baptism, it's always amazing as the child is carried in, it's carried in by the godparent. And the godparent renounces evil in the life of the child and unites the child to Christ. As we go around the baptismal font, it's held in, the child is held in the arms of the godparent. As the child receives chrismation or the, the confirmation, the seal of the Holy Spirit, the child is held by the godparent. As the child is given his first article of clothing to symbolize the brightness and glory of God, it's held in the arms of the godparent. As the child receives its cross, it's held in the arms of the godparent. As the child receives communion, it's held in the arms of the godparent. What does that say to each and every one of us? It says more than just those occasional gifts that we get. It says that that person has made a dedicated charge and a commitment to raise that child or adult to guide and lead them throughout their life. But how can we do that if we just bury our talents in the ground? It's impossible. It's impossible to do if we don't share our talents with other people. You know, it's amazing if you think about all the gifts that you have 
And uh, just the other day I received a, an email of someone who was talking about stewardship and they said, I've, I'm, I'm working on giving my time, I'm working on giving my, my treasure, but now I would like to give my talents. And they listed off what they do for a living and how they could help the church. But for our God's children, do we share those talents with them? Or do we keep them to ourselves? It's important to remember on this day and every day of our God child's life that we have to share those things so that they can continue to grow, so that we can have a, a good investment in what God has given us and return it to God with His interest. Part of the understanding of a talent and what God has given us is a closeness, closeness with God as well. If we are not close with God, if we don't understand what He's trying to tell us, if we don't participate fully in the life of the church, we will never really truly understand what God wants us to do. And you might, I might ask you that question now and you might sit back. If I say, what does God want you to do? You might come up with your kindergarten Sunday school answer that might say, God wants us to be good people. Or, you might have a litany of things that are goals and aspirations for you to do in your life. Things to reach to. New developments, new talents, new aspirations of growth and spiritual growth. But how does that happen? That happens by self-evaluation and it happens by knowing what God wants for us. And the only way we can know really what God wants for us is to listen to what He's saying to us. And where do we hear the sayings of God? We hear it in the church. We hear it in the voices of our elders. We hear it in the Bible. We hear it in the traditions of the church. So there's so many places we can look. And there's so many parents around us that we can turn to for education and for spiritual advice. Always remember that if God has given you one talent in your life, just one, it's one more than you would have on your own. You know, sometimes as we go through our life, we think everything moves so slowly. Um, our, our, our development, our, our growth, all these things, our spiritual life, we feel like we might be stuttering or falling or starting over and over and over again. And I just wanted to share, you this, uh, share with you this story about how slow sound travels. And it says, sometimes the things that you say when you're a kid, uh, when your kids are teenagers, the things that you might say to them when they're teenagers, the, slow, the sound is so slow that it doesn't reach them until they're in their 40s. Now, if you think of that and you think about your godchildren, the little things that you do, the little tiny things that you do, might not hit them today, it might not hit them tomorrow, but when they grow and grow, they will develop and learn those beautiful things that you have to share with them. I always find it interesting at a, at a baptism when you see a tiny little child and they have this big, gigantic cross, an adult-sized cross that they're given at their baptism. And everyone's looking for that little dainty little cross for a child. And, and I always like the bigger one. I always think that that's a beautiful thing. Not because of what today is, because most children don't wear crosses until they're responsible enough not to eat them or lose them. So the bigger cross is always a remembrance that they grow into that. They grow into the appreciation of the gift of the cross that they've received, and they grow into the size of the cross that they're going to bear in their life. The things that you say to your godchildren, to your godparents, and to your children themselves it's something that you want them to grow into. Obviously, we want to speak age-appropriate to our children or our godchildren, but we need to set the bar high for them so that they can grow into that, so that they know that they can be saints. Not that it's something that's impossible, but to say to them, what does God want you to do? Your answer should be, God wants me to be a saint. That should be the answer that should roll off the lips of our children. God wants me to be a saint. Is that impossible? No. Why? Because we have all the tools in front of us. And all we have to do is to ask God to listen to what He has to say to us, to listen to what 
our fathers and mothers and our elders have to say to us, what the Bible has to say to us, and we will be on that path to holiness and saintliness. But as the fathers of the church always remind us, you can convert one person with what you say, but you can convert a thousand people by how you act. Amen.